Back tonight, turn in focus still on protest action uh, by health care workers. MEC for Human Settlements and Infrastructure Development, Debuhang Mayile, has warned that patients in public health facilities are at high risk in case of any equipment failure. This comes after some services uh, and service providers uh, that maintain equipment in hospitals were denied access in a number of facilities due to the public sector protests. For more on this, we are joined now by Masabata Mutlanen, Head of Department Gauteng MEC for Human Settlements and Infrastructure Development. Masabata, good evening, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for your time. What brings about the high risk and what equipment are we talking about? Good evening, Tabo, and good evening to the listeners. Um, Tabo, um, what brings really about the high risk, um, you'd know that for a hospital really to function, there's quite a lot of dependency, firstly just on, besides the power outage issues of uh, potential power outages and load shedding if they're not attended to. Um, we are responsible for generators in hospital in terms of uh, generator maintenance um, in hospitals. So if we do not have access to that, both our staff as well as service providers, it means it has an impact on the supply of electricity to those um, hospitals. Um, secondly, we also have boilers. Um, you know that boilers also control the steam um, and, and assist in all the various uh, facilities um, within the hospitals. We also have autoclaves. Autoclaves are utilized for uh, sterilization of medical equipment. Um, and in many instances, if there are challenges, uh, our staff as well as our service providers will have to come in, including um, uh, age back, uh, in air conditioners, uh, where in, whether it's ICU or theater, where the temperatures are supposed to be at certain temperatures. If there are issues and we don't have access to that, it means it has a direct impact on the lives of the, of the patients. We also um, assist with uh, and maintain lifts as well. In some instances, if the lifts do not work, uh, our service providers and our staff have to go in. So overall, uh, we work 24-7 um, in hospitals and we provide maintenance in uh, all our various hospitals, academic hospitals and all hospitals within within Gauteng, um, yeah. is, um, is, is, in the Gauteng province. And is, there, is there a predictability in terms of intervals as to when you need to, to carry out the, these services or this maintenance uh, on particular equipment for you uh, to anticipate whether there will be a breakdown or not? Not in many instances. Well, um, because we do have our officials, which is what I wanted to say earlier on, that we do have our staff that are based in, in all the hospitals. Um, in many instances, they work very closely with the health uh, officials and if there are any incidences uh, wherein they have to, the boiler has to be replaced or the, boil, the boiler has to be replaced with coal um, it has to go for, they have to remove the ashes for an example those are, those are specific times um, but even that um, that's why they operate over 24 hours so our staff work like even like medical staff, where they are based on shifts. So they will have to be there from 6 to 6, for an, for an example. So if on a specific shift um, there is no replacement or one of the officials is not coming through to replace uh, the other official, it means, therefore, the others, there's a risk that they will be there over a period of time. And it also causes um, uh, uh, them to sleep on the job, for an example, if they are tired. But also, so in many instances, um, you continuously have to have them there. So you can't say you'll only have intervals. They'll only be there only in the morning. They won't be there during the day. Anything can happen um, um, during, during yeah. the operations of the day um, um, within, within the hospitals. So they have to be stationed in our, in, our, in our clinics and hospitals. So in some instances, for example, yesterday we were at Charlotte Makleke. We were in one of the, the facilities next door to Charlotte Makleke and um, some of the officials were refused to entry, um, and which means, therefore, they cannot come in into the hospital to remove uh, or to shift, to change, share, share the shift with those that were inside, mm. which means, therefore, um, it then delays, uh, the shift delays, um, and it definitely may cause um, harm um, and even just the accessibility um, of any other requirements that the hospital might require. Yeah, elucidate a bit on that harm that uh, could possibly happen. For example, I mean, are you saying, especially if a facility is not part of those that are exempted from, from load shedding, should 
a generator fail and that particular facility is under load shedding, it essentially means there will be no electricity to that facility. What, what would be the, 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 the fallout from that? that that's correct, um, Tabo, and I think we can only think of the worst case scenario. Um, and, and I think that's why we do our best um, to ensure that um, in those intervals where there are such instances where there's power failures, our teams are always there um, on, to provide the standby generators. So if there's no one, um, the risk is quite high. And, and we don't want to speak about what can happen. Um, of course, it means if there's no power supply to an ICU, if there's someone who's being on an, who's an operation, operating room, um, who's being operated on, on the operating table, it therefore means that they may lose oxygen, for an example, because perhaps that oxygen is reliant on the power that the power supply in that in that specific area. It has a direct impact. Um, it could be someone who could be in a lift and there's a power outage, for an example, and that generator is not working. It means that person can be stuck in that specific lift. So it is important for for this team to always be on standby, to always be um, available um, to ensure that um, they do provide the necessary assistance that yeah. the health officials may require from them. Now, Mr. Bata, you, you you're probably more familiar with with the details of this story than than I am, but I, I know in recent times a a particular pipe, a copper pipe that was transmitting gas was was stolen in in one of our facilities. Facilities uh, and and it was an act of sabotage, I believe, as as as, as it was reported. Uh, are you expecting uh, or are you are alert to, to to the fact that some of the acts could 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 uh, occur at this time? And what extra measures are you putting in place? You're quite correct. Uh, this incident specifically was at the Chris Honey Barabwana um, Academic Hospital. This incident happened in December period. Uh, where there was an act of sabotage um, specifically. So what we have done with our team, um, we have called in the rest, most of our um, chief engineers as well as those artisans that are working in those hospitals to rather not to be going anywhere else, uh, but rather staying in those hospitals, largely to ensure that, um, I mean, we're not, we've not allowed anyone else to go and leave at the moment. Two, we've also made sure that... Um, those that are supposed to be shifting, uh, where they're supposed to be shipped, um, they are a replacement for all those very, uh, various shifts. But also, second, uh, thirdly, we've also spoken specifically to hospitals to ensure that there's extra security measures, particularly in the areas where this has happened, so that there's no repeat of that spin, those specific um, uh, uh, pipes being stolen. Um, also, so that when those acts of sabotage um, to take place, at least there is a bit of visibility and there is alert, alertness um, to, to both our staff as well as the hospital, um, the hospital staff. So we, there has been an indication that um, those measures have been put in place, particularly in the hospitals where the strikes have been taking place in Chris Honey, in Helen Joseph, as well as Charlotte McLeke, as well as the various hospitals like um, Yusuf Dadu and so forth. So we are, our staff are generally alert and, and we've given, um, we've asked most of the staff currently to be available um, and not to really go and leave so that they can always be available for replacing others so who needs to, to change the shift because we certainly do not know how long the strike will take place uh, or how long will the strike uh, or when will the strike um, come to an end. Yeah. Your workers are also public servants and I suppose it's not just the healthcare uh, workers strike. This is a, these are all public servants uh, who are raising these, uh, these issues of uh, conditions of employment. Maintenance staff, do they fall, especially those who work in hospitals under essential services? Well, they do. Um, um, they do fall under essential, essential services. Um, but, but you know how it is with officials, sometimes they would feel that um, as much as they are part of essential service, issues of, uh, of salaries, issues of conditions of employment, um, they also affect them. But we have really, uh, these are the staff that are specifically working for the Department um, of Infrastructure that, have been, uh, that are paid directly by ourselves. And at the moment, um, the strike specifically focuses on the health workers um, and the issues that affect the health workers. Um, and we did request that if the health workers are not there, ideally even now, 
we should be assisting the hospitals with additional capacity um, where, where, where necessary. So the issues um, generally are known, the issues are being attended to um, at, 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 the, at, the, at, the, at the bargaining level, and I think we hope that definitely um, these matters will be resolved as soon as possible. But we know for a fact that they are affected and others will even say, but these are our colleagues, and uh, whatever our colleagues um, are being affected by is also our plight. Um, but we've also said it's important for you to understand your role um, as officials of the Department of Infrastructure Development, that you are also there to ensure that the facility infrastructure does not fail during this very difficult time. Masabata Mutlaning, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on. Head of Department Gauteng, MEC for Human Settlements and Infrastructure.